My name is George Suzuki. I'm currently a research associate at Michigan State. I also recently obtained my PhD uh, here at MSU, uh, working with Professor Mohsen Zairnuri. So what I'd like to present today is um, a development that we did on, on IMAX schemes for the time integration of nonlinear FDs. And this is a joint work with Yongtao Zhou and Mohsen Zairnuri from uh, Michigan State and Beijing Computational Science Research Center. So first I'd like to acknowledge uh, uh, the organizers of the event. So uh, I'd like to thank the One Known Local World team for organizing this, um, this very interesting event and also the Journal of Bird Dynamics and the Local Modeling. Uh, I'd also, also like to thank the agencies that funded this project, the uh, Army, the Air Force Office of Scientific Research, the Army Research Office and the National Science Foundation. So a little bit of outline of my talk. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the motivation that we have, which is usually center about uh, modeling uh, soft and squishy materials uh, that, uh, that which we, for which we employ the notion of fractional calculus. Then I'm gonna talk about uh, the numerical schemes that we developed uh, that uh, employs fractional multi-step approaches to build up to an IMAX method with the purpose of uh, time integration of stiff and nonlinear problems. Then we're going to talk about the schemes for fast time integration. We're going to talk a little bit uh, briefly about the code and numerical examples. So the main motivation that we have for, um, for our, uh, um, during my research for uh, using FDs and also motivating to develop numerical methods and try to make them efficient was to uh, capture the anomalous rheology of materials. So so what is this anomalous rheology that we're talking about? So this is a type of material behavior that spans a wide class of types of materials that goes either from very soft materials to also uh, plasticity of metals, for instance. And what you see usually in this type of behavior, you're going to see that when you do, for instance, stress relaxation and creep experiments, uh, when you look at the stress response over time, you're gonna notice a notion of power law scaling. You can have single to multiple types of power law scalings, tempered power law behaviors. And this is the main fingerprint of this, um, of this type of phenomena. And we're mostly interested either in, in both doing high fidelity simulations of these material systems from capturing the experimental response to determine material parameters. But we're also, um, there's an aspect that happens is that Usually this type of uh, far from equilibrium dynamics that's given by power laws happens at, at the long time integration regime. And this is the case, for instance, in squishy materials like um, food preservatives and also uh, bladder tissue response. And um, usually uh, the class of materials, uh, the class of FDEs, fractional differential equations that are corresponding to this type of behavior given by single to multi-term um, uh, types of fractional Cauchy problems. And most uh, importantly, the reason why we're interested in doing the very long time integration is that because we're interested in simulating the failure of this type of materials. So it's a, a process of high number of cycles that uh, needs accurate long time integration. So, um, so this is the type of problem we're interested about. So it's this type of nonlinear fractional Cauchy equations where we have this uh, Caputo derivative here on the left-hand side, a linear term and this nonlinear force here, uh, this nonlinear term. And we're dealing at this time with fixed fractional orders and uh, these uh, Dirichlet um, uh, initial conditions. And this is the operator that we're, we're talking about. So this is a, 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 what we call a Caputo fractional derivative. Uh, I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, most people here are familiar with this uh, type of um, a non local in time operator. And the main characteristics that I'd like to point out is that we, uh, this is given by uh, uh, basically this power law convolution kernel that convolutes this time derivative of the function of interest. And since this is a power law kernel, uh, we, uh, the the accurate evaluation of this operator for numerical methods involve long-term history computations over your entire time integration domain. And also, as you can see in this kernel, we have 
a, uh, a weak singularity that, that's nearby the lower limit of integration. And this tends to degenerate the solution accuracy of many existing numerical methods. So what we're looking for in the characteristics and the qualities of a numerical method that can uh, solve this type of problem, especially for uh, in the case of stiff systems, uh, we want to be able to handle the low regularity of the solution and consequently uh, uh, how this is passed to the nonlinear force term. We would like to have a numerical method that has linear complexity over time and it can also maintain the stability across your uh, parameter space. And that at the same time generalizes the structure of existing integer order schemes such that you can have, you, you don't change that much the original structure for integer order problems. So the approach that we take, um, so we start with a fractional Adams Moulton method uh, that we, uh, whether that we develop for, uh, that we follow for the case of linear, of the linear case. So here we don't have a nonlinear force term on the right hand side. And the main uh, idea of building up this method is to uh, first start with a, a, a split of this fractional Caputo operator. So we split it into a local and a history part. So we have a, a, a split here of this integral operator. And uh, by using appropriate relationships between Caputo and riemann louville derivatives, we uh, pass an inverse local operator on both sides. So what happens is that you recover this, you recast the original integral differential problem in this integral formulation, where uh, one, one of the uh, uh, um, uh, different aspects compared to other uh, linear multi-step methods that you have is that the history term that has been split on the left-hand side now has a local fractional integral acting on it. So it increases the regularity of your history term. But the consequence is that uh, the set of convolution weights that you get uh, has a set of hypergeometric uh, weights now. So the final structure of this, um, of this uh, fractional adams moulton method is similar to integer order cases with the difference that you have this history low term. And to handle the, the low regularity that happens nearby the initial time, uh, there's a number of, of methods that can be employed in the literature. Our method of choice is what we call Lubitsch correction terms that has been developed a while ago. So the idea is that for whichever operators that you have here, that you're going to interpolate or approximate your solution. For in this case, we use second order, first and second order polynomials to uh, implicitly interpolate our solution. Um, you're going to uh, perform, do this expansion here of some correction weights that act on the initial, um, uh, nearby the initial solution in your time grid. Um, and the way that you obtain these weights is basically to have an assumption on a power law expansion of your solution with some correction powers that have to be determined. And usually uh, they, and usually you either obtain this from the regular information of the solution or you can uh, guess a set of these uh, correction powers. And the final form that we get for um, uh, fractional adams moulton method for low regularity of the solution uh, is given by uh, this expression here, where we have the appropriate correction terms. Now, moving on to the nonlinear case, uh, now we introduce, uh, uh, we follow a similar approach, but now we're introducing this nonlinear uh, force term on the right hand side. So the idea here is that uh, we do the same uh, notion of local, uh, local and history split, and we recast this in an, into an integral form. And the difference is that when we evaluate now uh, the force on the right hand side, uh, we do um, uh, we we do an extrapolation of the of the force term. So what we end up with is something similar to the Adams Moulton's appro Adams Moulton approach and also the corrected history loads that we had before, but we also have an additional extrapolation term for the force with proper correction terms. And uh, the way that we obtain these two IMAX schemes is that with a first order and second order extrapolation, we recover a first and second order IMAX scheme. 
now th that was the baseline of the method so um that was the base method that we get so you can uh given any uh time step in your grid in your uh in your uniform solution grid you can compute um your solution by evaluating the history terms and the force um and the extrapolated force but at the same time the computational complexity that you get from that scheme is order of n squared where n is your number of time steps um so to to try to speed up this method, we uh, we um, looked into the algebraic structure that you get when you recast this into a global form. So the idea here is that now now we have a vector of solution um, of solution coefficients here, and we can uh, leverage pretty much uh, the history uh, terms, and we obtain a lower the linear system that you get when you recast this, you, you get a, a lower triangular topless structure. And here on the right-hand side, you have a nonlinear um, term that involves the product of, of a few sparse matrices and a few tall matrices corresponding to your correction terms. So, so the idea here now is to leverage this matrix structure. So um, what we're doing here is that we, we approximate this lower triangular toplet system in a block circulant matrix. So this is uh, what we call approximate, this is what, what is called an approximate inversion, inversion approach. Such that for um, such that the the you obtain the solution by doing this uh, inversion of this K matrix that we uh, we approximate here with some uh, small term. And the point is that since we can recast this in a block circulant approach, we are able to uh, perform a fast Fourier transform. And since this is a still a nonlinear system, we leverage a fixed point iteration to iterative solve this, this system of equations. And the resulting computational complexity that we, we obtain is of order n log n. So this is the overview of the algorithm that we apply here. Um, Search you're at 12 minutes. Yes. Thanks, Marta. Uh, and the language that we employ this, we do this in MATLAB. This is the information about the repo that we uh, have. Um, here we are providing, I'm gonna just quickly talk about the, the test cases that we have. So this is based on the paper that we recently uh, published. And we have three test cases that I'm gonna quickly present the results. Uh, and you can reproduce them by downloading in the, in, in the repo. And we have four main solvers here for single and system of fraction differential equations. So I'll qu very quickly wrap up the results. So here we show the stability regions for the second order IMAX scheme. So we see that the stability is maintained for a range of fractional orders. We show the, uh, the linear complexity for the fast solver. We have a um, few numerical examples here that can be reproduced from the uh, in the repo repository. We have a, a stiff system of equations here um, where we are able to recover the first and second order uh, convergence of the IMAX schemes. And we have theorems in, in, in our work that, uh, that these numerical results support. Uh, we also have uh, a nonlinear case of an FDE with some fabricated solution here. We're also able to recover uh, the uh, accuracy, first and second order accuracy of the schemes independent of the fractional orders. And finally, we have um, uh, the case of a nonlinear oscillatory FDE where we have this highly oscillatory solution. And in this case, we use benchmark solutions to um to do our convergence tests and this can all, all these can all be reproduced uh by uh, checking the the repo of our code uh okay so with that i would like to wrap up so we developed these uh two imax schemes from for stiff nonlinear uh, fdes they have linear complexity over time and we're able to handle uh the low regulative solution uh with a set of correction terms so here are some references for our uh, formulation and some other methods. And I'd like to thank you for your time.